Hello and welcome to week 42 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk about something kind of interesting, at least it's fascinated me, is the difference between change password and reset password. And it's probably about a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I ran into this and I had no idea that there was a difference between change password and reset password. And so I researched it at the time and I made some good notes but never got around to blogging it or uh, this video blog here now for the first time. So I'm now going to cover the differences between it and really it's not well covered on the web either. So I don't believe a lot of people really understand some of the differences between it. So I mean, change password, reset password sounds like the same thing, right? Well, let's take a look at it. And here's where I realized I was on to something. Is if you go into, let's say a server, but it happens on the client workstation 2, and I hit set password, and I believe, I remember when this first came, I think it was Windows Server 2003, when it had all this verbiage that appeared. And look at this, resetting this password might cause irreversible loss of information. For security reasons, Windows protects certain information by making it impo impossible to access if the password is reset. So the data loss will occur the next time you log off. Wow, that sounds so serious. But yet, you know, I've been resetting passwords with this, you know, for years and haven't run into any issues that I've noticed yet. And so w what's the deal? You know, are they just trying to be protecting themselves or why, what is this? So um, now it does give a recommendation on this one nowadays. You should use this command only if you've forgotten the password and do not have a password reset disk. If you know the current password and want to change it, press Control Delete and click Control Password or Change Password instead. So let's see what the deal is here. And actually, let's go to on Windows 7. We have something kind of similar here. Is we have a couple different users. If I go to my user, and if I change the password, change the password. Notice it asks me for the current password and the new. And it says, uh, basically, not too much extra. There's no big warnings for you. But let me go to a different user instead. And let's go to a temporary one I set up. Change the password. But now, it says, you're changing the password for Scott Remote. If you do this, this user will lo lose all EFS encrypted files, personal certificates, and stored passwords for websites or network resources. Do you want to do it, basically? Okay, so there's a difference between changing the password and resetting. Now the words are not consistent. They call this a change password too. It's a change password for a different user. So let's take a look at what these are and why they are actually different. So here's the deal. If you change your own password, so let's say in this situation here, manage accounts, my own, and I change the password, it prompts you for the current password. So I'll type, I type that in and I would enter the new password and confirm password and change password. That will not lose your encrypted information. Some EFS encrypted files, uh, and I guess maybe one of the reasons I haven't run into this much over time is I, I haven't leveraged EFS really in my own environment. Uh, so then that, we also have IE, or Internet Explorer passwords, and email, it's in, it happens to be encrypted if you've encrypted it with your user key. Okay, so the reason it's able to do this is because it uses your password to figure out the hash, it kind of reverses it, and then will re-encrypt it here properly with the new password. Now, if you do it abruptly, as in this situation here, change password, where you don't enter the original password, if you're not the user themselves, then it's not able to do that reversible effect, and that user is then stuck with it. So that's where the password reset floppy disk is necessary so that you can recover from that if someone does happen to change your password. So let's actually try it out and to see some of the effects between the two. Okay, so looking at this server here, I'm taking just a, one of our workstations and I'm rather than doing it on my local machine, the Win 7 machine, I'm doing it here on the server just because I can easily log off and log on again and continue recording while it's doing it. So what I want to do is let's go to a browser and understand that what I'm doing here will apply to EFS encryption and also anything that's encrypted in your email using standard encryption there as well. So what we'll do is let's go to 206.72.117.39, which is a page now, we have some cache in here, so just ignore that. Let me hit refresh. And so now what we see, it's prompting us for the username and password, which is good, because uh, I password protected it for this example. So let's log in, and with the password that I have on that machine, and let's remember the credentials. 
and which isn't always wise by the way, but let's say you do happen to remember it for certain sites, which is not a problem on lots of sites. And now it brought us in. We're gonna go again in our browser and refresh and notice it remembered the credentials, which is great, right? Well now let's go in here, computer management, and let's do a reset password rather than a graceful change password. So go to users, go to Scott, and reset this password. And so the new password then needs to be something else. And that has been set. And so now let's, we need to log off and log on to see what's gonna happen. So we'll log off. Okay. So, and we'll mind later on this. So now let's go to this here and go to the address, refresh, and look, it's lost our credentials. So a forceful change, and this is, a, it's a perfect example, although of course it applies to EFS and other things as well, that we've just now lost all that information. It wasn't able to do anything with it in a forceful change. Something I had no idea up until I ran into this maybe about a year and a half ago. So now we can, of course we can change it. Let's save it again. And it's been saved. And of course now we're back to normal again, but I had to enter that password and I may not want to have to enter all my passwords after every password change, right? So let's go here, refresh, and of course it saved it. So what we want to do is let's try a graceful change instead. And the way we can do that is we can do control alt delete or because it's in a remote desktop, I'll do control end and do this option here, change password. It also works on a domain. So change password. Uh, your, your password complexity requirements are honored in this. So of course it does have to make sure it's a valid password. And so let's see here. Okay, so the password has been changed. Let's log off and log on again. This time, if we go to our browser, go to 206, let's do a refresh, and it's maintained all of our credentials. So there we have it. So we see the difference between, if you have an option then to change a password where it doesn't give you the previous, a prompt for the previous password, then uh, you're gonna be a forceful change there. That's not gonna be pleasant there for the end user, or they may not mind if they're not saving passwords. And that's maybe why I didn't mind it over the years. And now, uh, also even for you as a developer, the same principle applies. So you may have certain situations here where you do a change password, where it asks for the old versus the new. And if I remember the syntax correctly, it's reset password, and it just asks for the new. So this, of course, uh, has a different effect than the previous example did. Now, uh, even this previous one doesn't always work. So it depends on your situation. Uh, you need to make sure you're testing and you're running from the right account. I believe you have to run, in PowerShell, you have to run from the local machine from the right account. So even this doesn't always work. So your mileage will vary. So the change password and reset password are different. And it is important to be aware of that so that you have more graceful password changes that don't impact other users too much. Thanks for tuning in. And again, I hope to see you again next week.